Oh, hey, are you here for the guns.com video on which gun is best for home defense? Well, come on in. Welcome to my humble abode. Today, we're going to be talking about all kinds of guns, like this rifle for a modern material, available on guns.com. Also, we're going to talk about pistols. These things are neat. You can hide them anywhere. Pretty cool. Finally, certainly last but not least, the venerable shotgun. These things will wreck shop. However, they got some pros and cons. So let's dig in to all this goodness. So before we get into the guns, we got to go over the broader topic, home defense. There is an enormous amount to consider there well beyond the scope of this video. I do just want to say, however, that you need to always be aware of your local, state, and federal laws as they apply to you and your right to defend your home and your right to employ lethal force. After that, training. No matter which of these guns you end up employing, you're not going to be effective with any of them unless you have good training on the use of them and, more importantly, their employment within a confined space because most of us don't live in houses the size of Walmart. Finally, we need to talk about ammo considerations briefly. So let's get into that. There's a lot of information out there, but unfortunately there's also a lot of misunderstanding about the ballistic properties of rounds as they perform inside normal US building material. The FBI has a lot of good data on this. I encourage you to look that up. Bottom line, shotguns with most defensive rounds, buckshot and slugs, are going to overpenetrate the most. After that, pistols. Typically, we're using hollow point or defensive ammunition. What tends to happen with that is the hollow point tends to jam up with material before it starts to open up and deform, basically turning it into an FMJ. I have personally seen a full metal jacket round and a hollow point round from a Glock 17 go through three separate internal walls and bounce off of a floor. Moving on to the last weapon system, the rifle, what most people tend to think is that because this is the highest speed round, it's going to overpenetrate the most. Actually, what happens is because of the light weight of the round, the bullet shape, which is a spitzer shaped bullet, and the speed at which it's traveling, it actually tends to yaw and break up pretty quickly. Depending on the ammunition and a good, again, you guys can go look at tests that have been performed online or through the FBI. And so contrary to popular belief, typically what you're going to see is the least over penetration from your rifle calibers, then from pistols, and then finally from shotguns. I understand that's a little bit counterintuitive. I understand we can war game this out and do what ifs all day long, but the bottom line is that's generally what's seen based on FBI testing. All right, it's enough on ammo. Let's talk about the guns. Let's get into the shotgun first. This is a venerable weapon system. It's been employed in a host of defensive and offensive uses all over the planet for well over 100 years. It's got a lot of really good things going for it. It also has some pretty steep cons, and so I want you to consider it carefully if that's your selection for home defense. First and foremost, it's intimidating. Now, I'm not personally one who buys into the whole, if someone hears me rack a shotgun, they're gonna run away thing, because honestly, if someone's decided to make entry into my home illegally, they're probably there for a reason. Most likely, based on statistics, they're there to commit a property crime and, and not one of violence. However, we're seeing those crimes shift rapidly in the moment where people are confronted by homeowners, they used to flee more, it's starting to shift a little bit now where they're more willing to put up a fight. However, the price of goods is going down, and so it's less likely that people are willing to lose their life or suffer grievous bodily injury and harm over something that they might actually be able to afford anyway. Bit of a pro and con there, but bottom line is shotguns are intimidating, and they will do a massive amount of tissue damage, especially at the close ranges that we're talking about within home defense. Something that's aiding them in that damage is the most typical round you're gonna see is double lot buck. Now that's somewhere, depending on the load, between six and 10 pellets, all roughly individually the size of a 9 mil round, or roughly 0.33. So that's a lot of energy going down range. But like I said before, when we're talking about ammo, if you are shooting at an extended distance, especially if you don't have a choke in your shotgun, which is a basically a device at the end of the muzzle which tightens the pattern up, this thing can start opening up. Now, depending on your shotgun and the load, which I would encourage you to test patterning on, that group is gonna start opening up roughly to the size of an average size chest 
in the distances or slightly beyond what we're normally encountering inside of our home defense scenario, which is 10 to 20 feet. Beyond that, however, it's a good possibility that you're gonna have some pellets off your target, and that's if you're aiming. There's this idea out there with shotguns that you don't need to aim. You just point it down the hallway and start unloading, and that's a really great way to shoot your cat and your TV and not the person. So I would encourage you, no matter what gun you're employing, please always aim. Now there's some things that you can do to help with your aiming process. As we said before, number one, training. Train, train, train. These are not hard, but they're technical weapons to employ. The loading process can be arduous. They hold the least number of rounds out of the any guns we're talking about today. And it can be challenging under a stressful situation to employ the shotgun, manage the recoil, which we'll talk about next, and then get it back up, keep it running. So let's talk about recoil. 12 gauges, which is the gun I would most recommend if you're going for a shotgun in home defense, have fairly stout recoil. Now, semi-autos recoil a little bit less, pumps tend to recoil a little bit more. But again, have making sure that one, you're capable of shooting the gun responsibly, and two, you've trained on it, will really help mitigate the recoil issue. Finally, things you can put on shotguns. Over the years, especially in the last 10 years, we've seen a host of improvements in shotgun accessorization. There's optics specifically designed to help with uh, identifying where your pattern's gonna be, and again, going out and testing that to ensure that the optic and the group of the round you're using lines up is important. You can put weapon lights on them now with furniture from Magpul as well as Mesa Tactical. And that's gonna be a really, really big value add because no matter what gun we're gonna talk about, I'm always gonna encourage you to have a white light on the gun so you can positively identify what you're shooting at before you start breaking rounds. So that's a brief overview of the shotgun. We got some over penetration considerations, we got some recoil considerations, and we have patterning considerations. Not saying it doesn't work, but I am saying that this is a fairly special use case normally for most combat guns. That's why it's moved out of vogue in the military. Uh, still very effective. It's brutally devastating at close range to soft tissue, but again, it's probably going to be the gun that requires the most work to become proficient on. Next, let's talk about the rifle. This is my personal choice for home defense if I have time to choose. A couple of reasons for that. First, typically they're fairly lightweight, five to seven, eight pounds, depending on what you have on the rifle. Next, the rifle, especially the AR pattern of rifles, which is the most common rifle in the United States, has an almost unlimited number of accessories you can put, out, you put on it. So you can make it exactly right for you. You can have, as you see here, uh, optic, a riser to get that optic higher, to get a more natural point of aim, lasers, whether you wanna use that visible or IR. I'm not saying you're gonna throw on night vision before you go clear your house, but this allows me to have one rifle that kinda of does it all for me. And finally, a white light. That, again, allows me to make, make sure that I have positive identification on a target before I engage it. And finally, we've got pressure pads and grips and better triggers and all the different things we can put on it to make the rifle more ergonomic and give us the best possible chance. Remember, you never wanna have a fair fight. Oh, and of course, you can put on suppressors to keep your ears all nice and happy while you're shooting inside. For instance, just to go through it, I've got a whole sun optic, whole sun laser, a Streamlight ProTac light, and an OSS suppressor. Lots of great options out there. This is what I've decided to run. Now, the reason I choose the rifle is one, again, based on ER data, about 70% of people shot with pistols survive. About 70% of people shot with rifles die. I'm not saying that I wanna kill a person coming to my house, but I do wanna have the highest probability of stopping the threat as quickly as possible. And again, you can watch an almost unlimited number of shootings online where people are shot with rifles and pistols, and typically what you see, someone shot with a pistol, they have the time and ability to do something else before they succumb to their wounds, whether they die or not. And with a rifle, you almost always see very close to instantaneous stops. That's important because you're trying to end the threat to your home and your family as quickly as possible. Also, rifles are fairly lightweight. They're easy to maneuver. Uh, they are a little bit longer. They certainly can be. Obviously, you can get shorter uh, versions of these guns as well. And shorter guns work better in close proximity to walls and barriers and obstruction and all the different things that you might run into in your home. And again, this is a training issue. When we were in the Marine Corps, we had full-length M16A4s that we were doing room clearing with. Was it easy? No, but with proper training, we were able to make it work. Nowadays, with lighter and shorter rifles, it's all the much easier, but again, 
training is key when it comes to using any of these guns indoors. And then finally, you're looking at the highest potential round capacity for a rifle over a pistol or a shotgun. So depending on what you have and your state laws, again, which please take into consideration, you could have anywhere from 10, 15, 20, 30, 60, 100 rounds in a single magazine for your, your AR pattern rifle system. And that's a lot of value for you. It means that you're not having to try to get extra mags on you in the dark when you're waking up or not sure what's going on. It's just, it's nice to have more ammo than less. So that's a brief overview of some pros and cons for rifles. Next, we're gonna move into pistols. Now, there are a wide variety of handguns out there. Everyone's got their favorite. I'm not gonna talk about that. Generally for home defense, I'm going to encourage people if they're gonna select a handgun to have a modern striker-fired semi-automatic handgun. Couple of reasons for that. Actually, it's really main one reason and that's because it's the easiest to train on and it has the least number of things on the exterior of the firearm that you need to manipulate to make it go bang. And that's super duper important, especially if it's late at night and you're waking up out of a dead sleep and you're trying to successfully employ a weapon system. So for the handgun, typically, like I talked about with the rifle, except the inverse, this is not super awesome at stopping threats quickly. Now, there's probably the largest amount of data in the US for shootings with handguns because of law enforcement that's the primary weapon system they employ. We know that they can be effective, but there's also a couple of known factors that increase the chances of effectiveness of stopping a threat. One, shot placement. Can't beat it. Make sure you're able to accurately employ the handgun and put rounds where you intend them to go. Next, follow-up shots. This is a bit of a double-edged sword with handguns. Many handguns, depending on the caliber, the ergonomics, how well you shoot it, how much you've trained with it, may or may not be all that challenging for you to get hits, accurate hits, repeatedly and quickly at the distances that you'll typically encounter in home defense. Again, somewhere between five and 20 feet. Like I mentioned previously about ammo, it's a bit of a mixed bag when we're talking about performance in soft tissue as well as performance in building materials, but you can expect a decent amount of overpenetration should you miss your target or should you hit a part of the body that doesn't provide a lot of resistance and the bullet passes through. Next, we're gonna talk about accessorization. Most modern handguns will allow you to put an optic and a light on them. Like I said before, lights are super important. Please, if you're going to employ a firearm in home defense, have a white light on it. I would even encourage you to have a handheld light nearby that you're able to grab so that when you're trying to identify what's going on, perhaps you're not quite sure it's a threat and you're not pointing a gun at something and then turn the light on. Maybe it's something you shouldn't have pointed a gun at in the first place, regardless of whether or not you shot it. So that's a side note, but handheld lights are easiest to employ with a pistol because you're able to maintain a good fire control with your firing hand and employ a white light with your non-firing hand. Next, magazine capacity. That's kind of all over the place with handguns. Depending on what you choose, you can see single stack 1911s and 45 ACP, which have seven to eight rounds. You could have a Glock 17 or any other modern handgun and you have extendo mags that run 30 rounds. Uh, but generally you're seeing between 10 and 17 to 20. It's not bad, not as much as a rifle, more than a shotgun. So if this was sort of the, the Goldilocks zone, you may be thinking, hey, this is just right, but let's dig a little deeper. Handguns are arguably the most difficult weapon to employ accurately and quickly because a couple of reasons. One, short sight radius, right? The sight radius when you're running iron sights is much shorter on handguns than they are on rifles or shotguns. Now, obviously, an optic on any of these negates that point. Next, you only have one or two points of contact, depending, again, if you're shooting one-handed or two-handed. Both rifle and shotgun allow three points of contact, which allow more natural point of aim, or basically you orienting yourself towards the threat because we are predators and we have the eyes in the front of our head and we are going to face whatever we are concerned about naturally. Finally, we have the consideration of ballistics. Like I said with handguns and why it's so important to get rapid and accurate shots is because this is probably going to be doing the least in the same amount of time to stop the threat. So we've talked about a lot today and I hope you learned something. That's the point. I can't make a decision for you for which gun is best for you and your home defense scenario. 
Hopefully what I can do, however, is provide you with a lot of useful information so you can make a more informed decision. So that's kind of it, guys. Home defense is complex. There's a lot to it. Which gun, which ammo, and are you trained? I'll leave all that for you to decide. Bottom line, train hard, live free. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Then get out of here.